Lethal Company just came out with its biggest update yet, and here's everything that was added and changed. To start off, let's go over entity changes. A new entity called the Maneater was added. It has a power level of 2, 5 HP, and there can only be 1 per moon. This entity starts off in a baby form where you can actually pick it up and rock it to make it happy. If the Maneater starts crying in its baby form and you don't do this, it will grow into a much less cute version and kill you instantly. The Kidnapper Fox was removed for now so that Zekers can work on fixing issues with the entity. Zekers put in the patch notes that the Bog Crawler and Goopy Goblin were removed. These entities were just memes in the community and were not actually ever in the game. Coilheads have had a few changes. They enter a recharge phase after chasing the player for a while. They lose track of the player after being out of range for a long time. And they cannot jump as easily if spotted by a player while jumping. This refers to the gap jumps. There's a decreased chance from 14% to 5% for the butler to attack when colliding with a player. Bracken and Spore Lizard pathing was optimized so there's less lag, however Snare Flea still has issues. Hoarding bugs now drop items they are holding when killed before the item became impossible to grab. For moon changes, there is a new mineshaft interior. This interior has a 99% chance on Vow, so go there if you want to see it, but you can also get this interior on all moons except March. The mineshaft has two main sections, a facility area and a cave. There's an elevator at the main entrance to take down into the facility where you can then navigate to a cave entrance and explore. Loot spawns in both facility and caves. Additionally, in the caves there are places you can go underwater to access extra parts of the cave. Be careful not to drown. Experimentation removes spike traps. Dine was also adjusted having their main entrance and fire exit basically swapped. Additionally, on Dyne, the outdoor power was increased from 6 to 10. Lastly, Artifice had a significant nerf, with average scrap decreasing from 1987 to 1627. This is due to the object count being decreased to 26 to 30 objects spawning. Eight new scrap items were added. A clock. This item is one-handed and ticks, but entities can't hear it. A control pad one-handed scrap, a garbage lid, which is a two-handed scrap, a plastic cup, one-handed, a soccer ball that you can kick around, two-handed scrap, toilet paper, which is a two-handed scrap that takes up your entire screen, a toy train, which is one-handed, and a Z-Dog, which is super rare and one-handed. Another huge change is that there is an 8.4% chance for all scrap on a moon to be the exact same and have the exact same value. This means that you could get a seat on Artifice that is all gold bars, which Nero and my Discord server got, and the bottom line scrap value was over 4,000. However, if the item is too rare, like a gold bar on experimentation, then that item won't be possible to spawn for the event. How this works is if the total scrap is over 4,500, then it will multiply the item value by 0.7. If it is a two-handed item and it is less than 1,500, it will multiply the value by 1.4. And if it's not a two-handed, but the total scrap is less than 600, it will multiply the value by 1.4 as well. Other notable changes 
include mansion doors having a new sound. Weed killer price decreased from 40 to 25 credits. When dying, players automatically start spectating the closest player. Vein shrouds spawn further from the ship and have decreased spawn chance. Manta coils leave the moon earlier in the day, around 12 p.m. Item sales now display for host when starting the game. And a bug was fixed where shovel and knife had increased damage. Make sure to stay tuned for the guides coming out regarding the new entity and navigating the new interior. That's all there is for V61 currently, so I hope you subscribe, check out the Discord, and have a great day. Peace.